So you're doing your end of month reporting and you're going down looking at things month on month, year on year, feeling proud of yourself because you've got some kind of general upward trending movement, right? Then you look at your channel reports and all of a sudden you see this thing called other and you're like, other? What the hell is other? And then you think, well, I only really care about organic search, so I'm just going to scroll down and see what's going on there. And then all of a sudden you see this not set, and you're like, in the name of the wee man, what is not set? And then of course, staring down the barrel of a gun is not provided to, much like that bitter twisted ex-girlfriend of yours, it's been a kind of on-off weird relationship the last couple of years since Google introduced that. The thing is, as SEOs, our data informs our strategy and our strategy is really everything. So if the data that GA is giving us is completely broken, then technically our strategy is broken as well. Therefore, we're going to look at a bunch of methods to reclaim that traffic and rebuild it inside of Google Analytics and Google Search Console as well. First things first, if I was to go to our website, typeymedia.net, now I used to share that through something like Slack. The URL that it provides, yes, it drops you straight back in, but I really want that to tell me that that's come from some sort of messaging app. But when I click onto my analytics, it says that it's come through direct and the medium is none and it doesn't actually know where it's come from. The same thing happens on Messenger, WhatsApp, etc, etc. So the question is, how do we get around that? So other things are things like redirected traffic. So if we jump out of this again, um, we recently had a site migration from a.agency, which was a super cool hipster name that no one could get right or actually link to. And then we migrated it with a T01 redirect over to typeymedia.net. Um, problem with that as well, it's a non-secure URL being T01 redirected up into secure. Um, so again, when you look at your analytics, it also thinks it's direct, which is kind of pointless. Um, and the same thing goes from a lot of different traffic sources like you know, things coming from kind of third party social networks, going through weird redirects, you know, traffic from apps in general. Um, all of this is getting lumped into direct or it's been put as not set and ultimately not provided. If you're looking at your organic traffic and your direct traffic and there's a negative correlation between the two, despite you not actually doing a lot of, let's say, above the line advertising or anything that would drive direct, this is probably something that you want to have a look into because it's probably just being misreported in analytics. So the way we get around that is using this thing called Term Tagger. Um, it's something created by Google Analytics. It's really useful. Um, it gives you these UTM parameter codes to stick into your link. So here's a couple of places where I'd recommend that we start putting them. Um, first and foremost, my Google My Business profile. Um, so we're going to drop in the website URL here, then add a source and a medium and going to describe the campaign content. Um, the way to think between source and medium is the source is usually the platform. So think Google or Twitter or Facebook or something like that. And the medium is if it's paid, if it's organic or if it's a subset of it. In this case, I'm going to say Google My Business. Um, so what we can do here is we can literally take this and I can edit our Google My Business profile. So if I wanted to edit the business profile, you can see here when we click on the website now, aha, it's putting in the UTM parameters. And the interesting thing about that is when I now look at the analytics, there we go, it's coming through as Google My Business. So I'm starting to push away from it being direct to none, and I'm starting to define where it's actually coming from, which is really useful. Now you may be thinking, well Ross, that doesn't actually get me around the problem of dark social, and you'd be 100% correct. Um, the way in which that your URLs are shared when it comes to social is using something called Open Graph. So if you go inspect element and look for OG colon, you can see here this is the kickoff of the Open Graph. Um, and what I want to do is just jump into this and I can see that all of these properties is what they're going to use in order to share the website. So I can see here that the URL is actually HTTPS typeymedia.net, which is correct, but it doesn't actually have any UTM parameters. So First thing I'm doing is going into my site template and I'm adding UTM parameters into that so that if someone shares it on dark social, it will come up and show me dark social. Hat tip to uh, Mr. Arnout Hellimans for uh, showing me that one. Um, really interesting stuff, definitely one to look out for and got some amazing advice coming from that guy. All right, so that's your Google My Business one. Another one would be uh, tagging up things like Twitter. Um, but bear in mind, you want to do this in two different ways. So you can see here what I've done is I've tagged this up 
with UTM parameters to show that it's coming from Twitter. So Twitter, Medium's organic Twitter, and it's coming from my bio. And again, if we have a little look at that inside of analytics, eventually it will kick in. There we go. It's coming from Twitter. Much better because again, that would have just came through as weird direct traffic. Um, another thing I like to do if there's any other kind of URLs that are maybe pointing into other Google properties, you'll see here it says that I'm the host of the Canonical Chronicle. And what it actually does is it pushes people into my YouTube channel where all of the videos actually are. And you can see here, UTM source, Twitter, yada, yada, yada. I've got Google Analytics running on YouTube as well. So that's all gonna be tagged up and I know where all my video traffic's coming from as well. Really useful and helps me understand the channels that are actually best at promoting this sort of stuff. And of course, there's a million and one different ways to, to use this there's a, and loads of different places you can put it. So make sure you put it on your Facebook, on your LinkedIn, essentially any third party where there's links coming into the site, you wanna start tagging that up so you can understand a little bit more about the traffic. So why don't we actually just jump back into uh, Google Analytics itself and jump into the admin section. So one of the first things you probably wanna do in here as well so that direct isn't overinflated is get your IP address and dump that into your Google Analytics. If you're doing this for a client account as well, I highly recommend that you get all of theirs as well as their home addresses if anybody works from home uh, and go ahead and get that uh, kind of filtered out as well. So it's gonna be called um, office IP address. We're gonna exclude it and it's gonna be a IP and we're gonna bang that in there and we can hit save. And there we go. So now that's going to stop showing that as any sort of direct traffic. So another one to be kind of reticent of is the um, referrals for any sort of kind of strange payment platform. Uh, so for example, if you're getting a bunch of referrals, let's say from PayPal because you're using them as your payment provider, but it takes them off site to do the transaction in a secure environment, and then it brings them back into the site. What you're going to want to do is start removing that domain from the list. So I'd have a, a look at your referrers and make sure that there's nothing in there that looks a bit weird or if it's any spam bots or anything like that, get them in there and that'll bring that down as well. So the next thing to be aware of is if there are URLs on your website that rank for multiple terms, that's fantastic, but I wanna see how they rank for these terms. So if they rank for like 10 different terms, but one ranks in like average position of let's say 20 or 30, we can probably dig into that and see if we can actually enhance the quality of our content to get that bumped up a little bit so that we get a little bit more traffic. And also similarly, if there's a URL that only ranks for one term, we can look at how we can improve the quality of that content or maybe find similar URLs and take the content off and put it on one so you were kind of concatenating the pages down. So um, the way in which you do that and kind of see that inside of Search Console, so as usual, when you go to your queries report, you see all these different queries here, which is great. Um, what I like to do is click into the page and select an individual page itself. So in this case, I've selected the home page, which we've blacked out because it's a client. Um, and when you click queries, again, we've blacked all these out because it's client data. Um, you can see there's quite a lot of queries in there. Um, and you can't see this, but I can. And a lot of them are very, very different. Um, and they're not getting a ton of clicks from them as well. So what I want to do is see if I can actually optimize for that. Um, now. If you've got a website with thousands and thousands of URLs on it, you're not going to sit and do this manually because it's going to take you absolutely ages. So this is where we need to use something like um, Supermetrics plugged into Google Sheets. So um, essentially Supermetrics is a plugin for Google Sheets. Um, let me show it to you here. So you can choose from tons and tons of data sources as you can see. In this instance, we've decided to go with Search Console. So you can select the site you want, the amount of time that you're going to look at it over, the metrics, I just want to see impression clicks and average position. Um, here's the interesting one though. So I don't want to just split by query and just split by URL. I want them both side by side. So I'm going to get tons and tons of duplicate URLs for each of the different keywords that's in there. Now it's only an example, so I'm just going to pick a thousand and we click get data to table. Uh, and this is ultimately the table that you get. Now you, you can't see half of this stuff because as I say, it's client data, um, but you just need to take my word for it. All of the keywords are here on the left hand side. Well, first thing we do is we want to get all of the unique URLs that Search Console have given us. So we use this formula called unique. And all we're doing is referencing column B on this raw tab, which is essentially all of the URLs. Great. So we want to pull all of those in there. 
And then after that, I'm not particularly concerned about what the keyword is at this point. I just want to see how many of them there is. So all I'm doing is using a count if that says go to raw BB. And if you see this URL, count it up. And in this instance, there's 99 keywords related to that URL. That is a lot of keywords. Uh, you'll see that I've just closed out with an if error. So if you know nothing comes back, it says send help because that means the URL is in the index, but it doesn't actually rank for anything. Next one, really simple, we're going to do a sum if. So I now want to see of those 99 keywords, how many potential impressions, what is the demand for those terms that's going to this one URL? So it's very simple, sum if. So we look at what we want to sum, the thing we're comparing it to, and then the column that's actually getting summed up itself. And then here we've got traffic per term. All I'm doing here is I'm taking this and dividing by that. So I'm taking this 100 so thousand uh, impressions, I'm dividing by the amount of keywords. So I can see that on a per keyword basis, where is all the power com coming from and what is the highest demand keywords that we're potentially ranking for but not getting enough traffic for. And now really simply, I'm gonna start doing things like show me all the top keywords. So I'm gonna filter this down from top to bottom and that's gonna give me all of the ones with the most keywords in it, which is excellent. Um, or if you want to look at the ones with the highest potential traffic, um, I'd start looking at it from this point of view. So give me all the top things at the top here um, so we can start playing around with this as well. All right, so really easily when we decide on a URL that looks like it's got a bunch of hidden traffic behind it, all I'm doing is going back to the raw search console information, doing control F and paste to actually find where it is. And then what I actually wanna do is filter by that to bring it up so I can see the term that's connected to it. So in this instance, let me just see, there we go. So this one particular one is about floor lamps. Um, so I can pull all the different floor lamp terminologies in there, check the main page to see if actually we hit those keywords and if we've got enough content about them. And then if we don't, we can start writing a little bit more. We can of course do this across the entire website, but I'd start with the kind of highest value pages, the one that show you the most demand and we should be good to go. And that's reattributing your Google Analytics and Search Console traffic. Done.